This is a disclaimer. Do not turn off this video. Every single thing that is being said is important. It is essential to understand the basics. It might be a little bit stretchy and lengthy, but it is worth the while. Wait and listen up. Really listen. That's all I want to say now. Thank you. Hello beautiful people around the web, I am HD, and I'm your host for this video which will be about the medic in Team Fortress and 2 in MVM, Man vs Machine, the cooperative game mode in Team Fortress 2 of course. I hope that I can help you with this guide and get the word spread out that there is a guide actually for Team Fortress 2 Man vs Machine because it is rarely a occasion to see that there are actually people who have any idea what to do in this game and how to play. There is a general misconception that many people have about the medic and about all the classes in fact, but the medic is now a topic and I just want to explain some basics to you which you can then use to your advantage however you want, but if you get this right you cannot be wrong. So I thank you guys for watching in advance and let's roll. First up, I want to talk about the upgrades. As Medic, the first thing that you want to upgrade is the shield upgrade. The shield basically does that if you press the special attack key, people most likely won't know what the special attack key is if they first play Man vs Machine. The special attack key is not mouse 2, it's not, it's not H to use the, um, the canteens, but it is mouse 5, which, which would be the thumb buttons or whatever buttons on your mouse are still left. So that is the default setup. You can look it up under the option category and then combat. It's like in the middle half, whatever. Just use the shield, please. You heal and then you gain shield. That is, it's simple as that. As long as you heal health or damage, whatever you wanna call it, as long as you heal up teammates, if, even if it's overheal, you gain shield energy or the meter. If it is full, you can activate it by pressing mouse 5 or whatever your shield button is for the special attack and it will open up basically. The first upgrade is just a 45 degrees angle basically and the last shield upgrade is I, I think about 90 degrees angle and it, it never moves with your eyesight up and down but only left and right. It absorbs every single projectile, bullets and rockets and pipes whatever but not fire. Do not lie under the misconception that fire can be blocked out. You will be burning to death at that point. So don't try to block fire with that. You can also run towards enemy robots and block them. If you stand firmly in front of them, they might not be able to pass. And if they try to pass, they get into your shield and that makes them being hurt basically. They can pass through your shield sometimes, which is most of the time, but they can pass through your shield as well. And if you are unlucky enough or unskillful enough, they pass through your shield and then shoot at you and then the, whatever they shoot at you hits. Most likely a crit rocket which will mean the death of you. So try to stand slightly in front of the robots if you try to damage them with your shield because you just want to hit their hitbox which, which is slightly bigger and larger than they are. So make sure that their weapon model never punches through your shield. That is a very important thing. Also, if there are melee bots, which are may maybe the samurai bots of the demo man, just don't try to, to kill them if you are not skillful enough to dodge them or be staying behind because they will most likely just charge at you and you're dead. That's it for the shield. The next thing that you will have to upgrade is the healing mastery. On the bottom left hand corner you will see it on the upgrades tab. The healing mastery makes you heal quicker, get your shield energy fast because you heal faster and overheal faster and revive faster. As a medic you have four things to do, just four. Heal teammates, overcharge for crits, which would be ideal, and pop the shield and lastly revive teammates. If someone dies, they drop dead and their holograph thingy is staying on the ground as long as they don't die in stupid spots where they cannot be revived. When that happens, 
You just walk up to the telegraph and heal it as if it was a teammate. Most likely the teammate will be revived when about 60% of their original health has been restored, which would be for the soldier about 110 to 120 health and for the heavy 150 health, just, just about that. And to reach that health cap to revive them so that they have full health and full ammo instantly and full re reload clips, you have to heal them. And that is being affected by the healing mastery. You revive faster if you have the healing mastery. There's nothing else to talk about. Upgrade that to the maximum. The third upgrade is the overheal expert. When you heal people, you get your shield and you get your overcharge, but you get most likely your shield and you will notice that people, when they are full on health, won't give you as much shield. One thing to fix that is to get the overheal, which makes you, when you heal someone, get the overheal faster or more frequently because they have more health to fill up. Because you have to fill up health to get your shield. You know what I'm talking about? Also, people won't drop dead as quickly when they have completely over overheal health, which would be for the heavy 750 health, for the soldier about 520 or something, for the demo man 435, for the engineer 310 and all that, but they have more health and will stay alive a lot longer. That is everything you need to know about that. Next thing will be the overheal expert. All right, for the fourth upgrade, it is kind of difficult to say that. You have the basis now on which you can play and help other teammates. What I would recommend is looking at the top hand screen and see which bots are coming up on your HUD. When they have a blinking blue light around their icon, that means and indicates that they will have crits. If there is a bigger threat because there are more robots that can crit or like are not, for example, just heavy that punches, but for example heavies that shoot with crits and there's like 54 of them you might think about and considering getting those crit resistances looking at the board that says which robots come up next and seeing if you can get resistances and the only resistance that you will need in the beginning would be the crit resistance if you upgrade it always upgrade it to the max because no nothing else matters if, if you don't have enough money for maximum upgrades just don't even think about getting the crit at least. That's one way to go or the other way is to use it for the uber charge duration. Some people would argue that you could use it for the over overcharge rate, but I just don't think that makes sense. For the loadout, and this is like in between of everything, I just make a subsection now called loadout. You will use crits creek, you will use the uber saw that is the two things that you have to use what you use as your um, ranged weapon i prefer the crusaders crossbow because you can heal teammates on longer ranges if you are lucky and it, it, it's more useful than the freaking needles because you kind of sometimes need that health regeneration which you don't have if you have the blood sauger but i use the cross crossbow anyways why i mention this is because you have the uber saw the uber saw allows you on hit that you will gain 25% of your uber charge. Now what I do is basically try to get to a big bot that has another target in, on target. <laughs> so for example, the heavy, and he is fully charged and full, fully over, overhealed. Then you just walk up to the robot to the back of him, because if you stand in front of him, you might just die of random bullets right crocheting off somewhere. And I don't, I don't really know. Just get to the back, so to the side and stab them for continuous time. Just get the over overcharge. You don't have to mind waiting about 30 seconds, getting your overcharge set ready. Just get it, just snack it off here and there. If there is a sentry buster, try to encourage your team not to shoot it down. Maybe your scout to slow it down with the milk and then run after it, if you have the time of course and the capabilities, to get the four swings on it to get your over overcharge back. That is why you won't need the overchar overcharge rate, because you get your overcharge much quicker if you just swing enemy robots. Sometimes you don't have the capabil capabilities to do that and that is when you could use this upgrade, but I would generally speaking not recommend doing so. Summing up, the fourth upgrade will be 
the crit resistance or the overcharge duration. All right, now you have the essential part fixed basically when you are done with that. The last upgrade that you could do is basically just something that would depend on how you play and I would recommend just to try to do so. So I encourage you now to do whatever I say. Fifth upgrade or whatever you do after that is resistances. Just get, just get the resistances. Just look at the top hand screen where the HUD indicates which bots come up next. When there is a lot of heavies or scouts or uh, snipers, try to get the bullet resistance. If there is a lot of soldier bots or demo man bots who shoot, of course, pipes and not using the swords, then you should maybe get the explosive resistance. It is very helpful to stay alive a lot longer to help your teammates and not dying and then don't be able to do anything. Revive as often as possible is a core part of your functionality and if you cannot fulfill that because you're dead yourself Then obviously you did something wrong So try to stay alive and get the resistance done if you are skilled enough to work with a shield Very good and you don't really need essentially the resistances try to go for movement speed and jump height jump height even before movement speed because getting up some obstacles just to be mobile a, a little bit more and getting up the truck on Manhattan for example or um, getting over the barricade on Rottenborg or whatever, just these little things really help out when, when it comes down to playability and reliability. So I would actually go for a kind of mixture of resistance and jump height and movement speed. Never ever upgrade fire resistance because you are in two cities um, and you won't need it in two cities, which is the whole complete package of Rottenborg and Manhattan and never ever upgrade health per second. Never upgrade that because you have, first of all, your own health regeneration as a medic and second of all, you just survive a lot longer than any other class because you have a shield and then can get to a medic kit or whatever. It's just well wasted, whatever. Okay, what the last thing is that I want to mention here is the canteen specialist. If you are a, in a capable team and you are a capable team player yourself, you could actually skip the resistance part and the movement speed and jump pipe part and just get, get straight into the canteen specialist upgrade. I would recommend doing a full upgrade on that section and upgrade the canteen specialist, then click accept, then exit the canteen upgrade station and enter it again. What it does is that if you upgraded the canteen specialist, your canteens that you can buy will be reduced in the cost. The price will be reduced, which makes that you just won't use up that much money and you can buy more canteens. You share canteens when you heal someone and then press the canteen button on default. It's the button H. Do not use the canteen and then heal someone because then it's a wasted canteen. I would always go for the crit canteen, to be honest, because more damage means a faster end of the match. You can, you can go for the uber charge canteen when you have the crits as well, because you heavy can body block a giant robot if there are not enough people dealing enough damage, that is a possible way. Just do not get any other canteens than those two, but I would recommend crit canteen. It's the most expensive one, but the, with the upgrade done, you don't have to spend that much money anyways, and more damage is more awesome. It's as simple as that. All right, that should sum up the essential things about the medic upgrades. Now I, I would move on to just some random parts that just come into my mind when it comes to playing medic. And I would really listen up right now because that is very important. There are two things. First of all, how to deal with giant robots. And second, how to manage your shield. That is a very important thing for me to realize as I, uh, after a long time, just then, Got how to actually use the shield more effectively and how to deal with giant robots. Okay, first of all, the giant robots. When there are giant robots approaching, most likely heavies, demo men, and soldier bots, try to stand in front of them but looking at where they are facing at. When they are looking at the left, don't stand in front of their walking path but stand where they are looking at. Then pop the shield, of course, to absorb every single bullet or projectile so no one gets hurt. 
just just move around if you have to a little bit but always always stand in front of the face basically of the robot to get the absorption when it is a pyrobot you don't have to deal with it anyways because flames go through your shield that is the one thing the second thing i mentioned it before try to crouch that is what i'm now newly adding um try to crouch and move backwards to not be too fast to move out of the enemy of the robot's hitbox when your shield has popped and just try to firmly move backwards and always stay in the hitbox range of the bot but not that he will pinch through your shield and then shoot at you it it, it, it is a matter of practice practice of course but just for for you to realize that it is possible not to ever get hit and also always hit the enemy because the shield does incredible amount of damage if this if, if, if there's a skull to mark a bot for death or if there is a soldier bot with the buff banner you your you, you damage goes insane i i it's not rare to see that i sometimes um catch up with a soldier in that in terms of damage which, which is kind of being a shame to the soldier but i i do it okay it, it, when the when the matches progress it, he has too much money to upgrade stuff to deal, deal more damage than i do but it's funny sometimes Okay, the second thing. Okay, how to manage your shield. The huge, the majority of the medics that are out there in MBM will always pocket medic either the Dumbman or the Heavy. And the Heavy will be the most common one to pocket. Because people think, oh, he has much health and I have to heal them. And he deals the most, most damage because he has a minigun. That is stupid and bullshit. Okay. The heavy has a much has much health. That's why you don't have to heal him all the time. If he's not like so aggressive that he just stands in front of every single thing, that then you might consider doing that. But getting him healed up is of course an important thing to do. What now happens is that you only heal him, other people die, and then you have have to revive them, which take up more time than actually keeping them alive. So always try to jump from person to person and try 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 to focus on um, how where they are staying basically try to memorize where they are try to always um, heal him up him 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 just switch targets quite often what you can do also is um, almost never overheal the engineer or the soldier or them when depending on how defensively they play but don't heal them quite as often and when your shields are down then overheal the one you didn't heal before so get your shield instantly you understand also if your shield is up do try to not overheal other people that ha that are not on full health and also are not threatened by death but do not try to overheal someone with your shield active because you won't get your shield meter full when the shield is active try to let the shield disappear completely run out and then heal other people to get your shield instantly back again that is the true mastery of a medic also, don't overcharge with crits a heavy on tanks because they deal less damage to tanks. Just only to tanks. One last thing that I didn't mention and didn't speak before about was overcharging the demo man as your primary source of damage output if you overcharge with crits. A demo man can lay sticky traps when giant robots are approaching. You see that when they are approaching or everyone in this game screams about like ah, oh, giant robots approaching or whatever. Uh, that is when you should overcharge the demo man. Also when there are medics in, in the package of the giant robots so the demo man can kill them all together. That is how you do it basically. Do not try to pocket the heavy because he cannot deal that much damage. Splash damage is more effective than single target damage sometimes. So that is that. Also, as a side note, don't be too greedy with your uber shards. You get them quite often if you're skillful enough with your uber saw. And you have it all the time, basically. So, just overcharge away when there's big waves, just whatever. Just give it out and that everyone is happy. So, I thank you guys for watching. I hope I could help you with this intensively um, upgrade-based guide. But it is so important to get that right. I hope you didn't turn off for this almost 20 minutes and just make make haste and try to spread out the bird. Thank you guys for watching again and see you guys next time. Keep it up.